So just a quick show off of the workshop. I've done a lot of upgrades. I got rid of those two tables that were over there. Now I just have one big workbench. It's like eight feet long. Put everything underneath it. So now I've got all of this extra space to walk around in. Uh, the CNC machine has been basically completely rebuilt because I was still learning at the time that I built it. So I damaged a lot of the plastic parts in the process. And I've upgraded it with a much better router than the one that I was using and 3D printed a lot of parts for attaching that, so we'll be able to do a lot more with it. I also set up a computer out here, because before there was no, like, I had a Raspberry Pi set up, and it really wasn't enough. So I went and grabbed a uh, Mac Mini that had been sitting in the closet for probably a decade. So I installed Linux on it so that it could actually run a useful operating system, as it could no longer be upgraded to anything useful on the Mac side of things. So now it's running Ubuntu Lite or something like that. I can't remember what I installed specifically. But it's got internet and it's easy to access and it's on this little arm here so I can move it around. And it's very handy. It's already been very handy. So today I'm starting on a new series which will involve creating ghost hunting equipment using Arduinos and anything else I can get a hold of that solves the problems. For the most part, it seems like I'm going to find breakout boards and chips and everything I need to build just about anything to do this. Uh, today we're going to start with a spirit box. So if you don't know what a spirit box is, it's a device that switches through radio stations very, very quickly, about once every 150 milliseconds. Um, and the idea is that ghosts can communicate with you through the static. Uh, so we're going to build one using a... TEA5767, it's this little breakout board here, and uh, an Arduino. So I'll start out with an Arduino and get it working, and then we'll make a breadboard Arduino and get that working, and then we'll make our own board on perfboard and just merge everything together. I'm also going to put an amplifier on it because um, the TEA5767 breakout board that I have it does include an amplifier, but it's only loud enough for headphones, and that doesn't seem as much fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an amplifier and put a real speaker on it, and then after we're done getting it all working and everything and on our own boards, we're going to make a nice case for it out of some birch plywood or some hardwood. I might even make it out of oak, at least the front of it, and make it look like an old-timey radio with kind of a steampunk flair to it. Uh, and then after that, once we have the whole device working and everything, we're going to go on a little uh, adventure and test the thing out. So today we're going to use the TEA5767 radio module to create a spirit box. We're going to use the um, Arduino Pro Micro. Um, it's probably a little overkill, but it's going to be the easiest way to get everything going. And then we're going to use uh, PAM8403. Uh, amplifier, and then probably a potentiometer to control the volume so that uh, it's not like constantly super loud, but loud enough to hear it without additional speakers plugged into it or anything like that. It'll all be a self-contained modules. So we're going to use a potentiometer to also control the speed at which it switches channels. It will start at 0.1 seconds up to a whole second delay between switching stations probably never use it that high but it seems like a nice valid range of 0.1 to 1. Um, you can see the code here and uh, like I said it's very simple doesn't require a lot. The uh, speaker however will just be directly connected between a potentiometer and ground which will allow the volume to be controlled using just a 10k pot. Um, that should probably give it a, a pretty good amount of range. We might have to tweak that, but we'll, we'll deal with that as it comes. Um, and we're going to squeeze it all onto this little perf board here. Uh, but for now, let's just wire it up manually using jumpers.
All right, now we have it all breadboarded out. Let's see if it's working or hear if it's working. All right, so for whatever reason, it seems to be stuck on a single channel, which I can actually hear music playing on. Hmm, I must have messed up some software, so let's go take a look at it. All right, turns out I just needed to restart the thing. Now it's working. Right now it's it's set to one second intervals, so I can speed it up. Now it's should be around a hundred or a hundredth of a second switching. Let's desolder the uh, headphone jack because we're not going to need that. We're just going to use some braided wire to remove it. I don't have any fancy equipment for this, so desoldering braid it is. There's a moth flying around me. All right, and there we go. That's removed now. We didn't need that because we're going to wire directly to these pads. All right, we'll just cut this down to however big it ends up being. So this will go like this, question mark. This will go like this. Uh, we may end up putting this in a different position. I may want to like mount this somewhere, so I'm probably not going to put it on the board like that. Um, this will go like this. And then our amplifier will go probably here. Here or here. Probably here, actually. Uh, let's see if we can get this a little closer. There we go. And then we do the amplifier. And then we're ready to go. Um, may wire the antenna differently as well. But for now, this is the way I'm going with it. Let's get some header pins for this guy. Uh, I'm not sure if those are normal pitches. No, they are. They're good. Okay. So we'll stick that one in there. Break it off. Stick this one in here. Break it off. Oop, I didn't want to break. There we go. Stick this one in here. And so on and so forth. So we're going to use this breadboard as kind of a uh, alignment setup to make sure that the headers are all done correctly. Okay, now we can solder that down and move it onto our uh, perf board. So, yeah, that should give it enough room. We'll have to design around this aspect of it, um, unless I could go get a uh, headphone jack extender and uh, run it wherever I want. So I'm, I might do that, but just to solve that problem, but let's get everything uh, soldered into the perf board and then we can go from there. So the perf board I was using before, uh, that was actually straight trace board, um, or whatever you call it, where the the traces run are interconnected along one axis. Um, fortunately, I realized it before I soldered too much of it down and I just pulled it back off. Um, we're going to use this board, which uh, this board... Uh, you ever open up an old electronic and it has that smell? I call it the smell of the 80s. Um, this board has that smell. These boards have that smell, rather. I bought them on eBay a long time ago. I think they're old They're old new stock, but I haven't had any problems with them. So you know, And I can cut it with a pair of scissors. It's very uh, pliable material, and uh, it's bigger, so I can actually arrange this a little bit better. So let's get back to soldering. So apparently I jinxed myself. I said I haven't had an issue with the, these boards yet, but here you can see the solder pad has peeled up in this one spot. It shouldn't be an issue because I'm going to solder across anyways, but still, I jinxed myself. All right, there we go. I am by no means the best solderer. Um, I'm kind of YouTube taught, but uh, this is more than strong enough, and... Now we can start wiring up the pieces together. All right, we now have enough together to where we can do a simple test. Uh, I'm going to wire a speaker directly up to this. It's not going to be very loud. It's going to be very quiet. So it's not really meant for that, but 
Uh, let's see here. Yay, it's making terrible noises. That sounds like the correct terrible noises, though. Yep, I'm hearing voices. I wonder if it's ghosts. Because the potentiometer is not plugged in right now, it's it's running at the lowest possible speed. So that was one second intervals. So it's it's really easy to hear voices whenever it's one second intervals. It's pretty much constant. All right, now let's wire up the uh, amplifier. All right, now the uh, amplifier has power. So now we need to run the outs to the ins. Clip this extra long so that we can get it where it needs to go. Oosh. Zoom. Did not need to be anywhere near this long, but you know, whatever. I was a little worried that I didn't put uh, headers to replace the headphone jack, but really these, these wires work fine. I can just feed them through and get them where they need to go. I believe that's the right side. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because I'm going to wire them together in the end. I'm going to wire the uh, left and right side of the speakers together for maximum volume, and then we'll use a potentiometer on the speaker itself to control the volume. And that's probably not the best way to do it. In fact, it's probably terrible, but I know it works. So that's what we're going to do. I honestly love this wire. It, it does break easily, but I don't have to to peel back the wire at all because the heat of the soldering iron is enough to pull back the ends of the wire just enough to get it into where it needs to be. So like using a pair of twiz tweezers and kind of fiddling with it into the right position is very easy. It makes this go faster. All right, I think we're ready for another test. So we're just going to, well, we're gonna zap this onto the end of the amplifier. It was a good test. And it doesn't really matter how bad of a job I do soldering this year because it's temporary. All right, that should hold for the test. Here we go. It's definitely louder. Okay, I believe that running the amplifier off of the Arduino isn't going to work. Um, that chirping sound, uh, I noticed it, it actually aligned with the lights uh, on, the, on the FM board and the Arduino. That suggests to me that it's just it's too much and it's cranking it down. So we're going to remove those, which they're right here, so that's easy. Um, and we're going to create a centralized power pin on the board. We're going to just put, put a two-pin header pin in somewhere and uh, we'll figure out exactly how we're going to power this later, but for now we'll just use my power supply. It's so hot in the workshop that it's actually taking an extra moment for solder to cool, and it's kind of screwing me up because I'm kind of expecting to let go sooner. Yep, that was definitely the problem. That was definitely the problem. Uh, cannot power the whole thing off of the USB alone. So instead, we'll wire the Arduino to this, and this will also power the Arduino. And then whenever we figure out how we're going to power this, which right now I'm thinking a couple of double A's will be enough with a voltage regulator. And uh, go from there. 
I remember one of these sides is louder than the other. I believe it's the right side, so we're gonna wire to that one. All right, and this should control the channel changing speed, which honestly, it's hard to tell if that's what I'm changing. So I'll have to listen very carefully to see if it sounds different. You can kind of hear the channel changing because it makes a sound as it changes channels. So theoretically, I should be able to hear that speed up and slow down. Yeah, I'd say it's working. All right. So we have a functional perf board version of it. Um, we can we can cut off this big chunk of it, and uh, whenever we design a case for it, we just need to keep in mind that this side is where the antenna is going to come out, or rather, the top of it. Um, so do something like this, where it's flat. Um, we still need to figure out how we're going to power it. All right, so in the end I decided 9 volt battery pack. Um, I like this one because it's got a switch built into it. Um, there's the pack, or the, the cell. Um, so yeah, so this will be part of it. Um, I imagine there'll be like a compartment that this sits in and you can just pull it out um, and have some slack on it so that it's not a big deal to change the batteries. So yeah, I think we're to the design phase. Well, we got through the first phase of it. The spirit box is working. Um, it has volume control and it has speed control and it's got a battery pack. It's, uh, it's ready to go. All I need to do now is design a nice case for it and then test it out.